Welcome to your English 7 concept video. This video takes the place of your class lecture, saving class time for valuable discussion. Treat this video as you would a class lecture. Pay attention carefully and take notes. If you wish, pause the video or rewind it to understand something you missed. Bring questions to class. Okay? Let's go. Today we're talking about the short fiction concept of setting in literature. We might ask ourselves for a definition. Setting in literature, what is it? The definition of setting is fairly simple. It is the time and place of a story. But is that enough for us to understand? Can I simply be finished with my setting analysis by saying a setting is the ocean? Or that a story is set in the middle of a city in the 1970s? Of course not. Setting is important to a story, and we must understand what setting does for us in the story. It does quite a lot quite a lot that we may not even notice. Let's take a look at its effects. First, setting helps the reader understand the rules of the story. What can characters do? What can characters not do? The ability of characters in a magical fantasy land of heroes and magic is quite different from the ability of characters in an impoverished area of the United States during the Great Depression. Understanding the differences in those settings helps you understand the logic of action, what characters can do and what they can't do, and helps us understand conflict, characterization, and a host of other concepts within a story. It will help you understand also the nature of characters. People are different at different times and different places. Even though there is some continuity of human nature throughout the millennia, we must understand that a person is different in 2013 from how they were in 2000 BC. And understanding the difference in those times can help us understand how characters might act differently within a story. Finally, setting can create mood. This video will not discuss mood primarily as a concept. However, when you study mood, you'll learn that mood is often developed through the setting. Setting helps you understand how the story should play out. And you understand that the minute setting is established. You may not have noticed what you understood. However, an author establishing a setting has given you ground rules and logic for the story. You understand those ground rules and logic, and you proceed through the story with that understanding. So how should we analyze or understand settings such that we can decide what kind of rules and logic and messages it gives? Let's take a look at three levels of setting. The first level of setting is the historical level, and this is the time of the setting. So a story may take place in 500 AD. A story may take place in 1600 during the Elizabethan era in Great Britain, for instance. It may take place in 1941 in the United States at the onset of the U.S. involvement in World War II, or it could take place in ancient China. The time of the setting is vitally important and will usually be announced in some way, either directly or indirectly, by the author. The next level is the physical level, the place of the setting. So, it's important not just to understand that we might be talking about the place being the United States or China, and actually that's not quite what we mean by physical setting anyway. By physical setting, we're talking about the actual physical place that characters are inhabiting immediately. Is it a room inside? Is it a field outside? Are they in the mountains? Are they in the middle of the city? Is somebody on an island? Is somebody on a space station? is somebody in another dimension. The physical place of the setting refers to the actual concrete environment in which the characters exist and act. And of course, a complex story may present a host of different physical settings, even though it presents one historical setting. The final level of setting is the cultural level of setting. You might understand historical and physical levels of setting very quickly. Cultural level is just as important. And as you consider the cultural level of setting, you may realize that you already understand it, even though you only understand it implicitly. Culture involves a number of aspects. We might be talking about the 
religious views of a people. We might be talking about their political views, their views toward gender, their views toward race. We might be talking about traditions and values, the way that parents act toward children. We might be talking about their opinions on government. We could be talking about any number of issues that relate to individual people and the societies that they develop. For instance, as you consider your culture in the United States in 2013, you may think about the values of a pluralistic democracy and how we value individual freedom and how we value individual responsibility. Those are part of our culture. And as you examine culture, you'll find that it's pretty complex. Every setting implies culture. If we look at the history and we look at the place, we can think about the culture that exists in that time and space. Not really understanding it? That's okay. Let's take a look at it in application with the Flight of Icarus in your textbook on page 925. The three levels of setting, historical, physical, and cultural, are of course at play in the Flight of Icarus. This simple story will create a setting very quickly and easily at all three levels. Let's take a look at historical. We may not know the exact time of the flight of Icarus. However, we know enough to know that it is an ancient time. We are talking about a prehistorical time. We are talking about a time during which technology is primitive. References are made to sailing vessels and other sorts of primitive devices, but we know that the technology and the understanding of technology is fairly primitive belief that one can make personal flying wings out of nothing more than feathers, wax, and a firm structure helps us understand the ancient attitudes toward technology and helps us understand the logic of the story. We understand that these ancient peoples may not have taken into account the scientific discoveries later associated with such technology. It helps us understand how Daedalus can do what he does and helps us understand the ancient world that presented that story. Then let's look at the physical setting. We know that the flight of Icarus takes place on an island. However, we also know that that island is situated in the ocean and both come into play very importantly. Thinking about Icarus and Daedalus acting on an island in the ocean reminds us that they are not in a city. They are not in a man-made structure. This is a setting prey to natural forces. They are in the midst of nature. And that can be, as we know from the story, very dangerous. But sometimes that can be a setting full of beauty. And in equal measure, we will see the setting being beautiful and dangerous. And that helps us understand some messages about the story about the beauty of flight and the danger of flight because it is situated in a natural setting. And of course, that natural setting is not controllable by humans. And this helps us understand also Daedalus's commands to his son that Icarus ignores. A lot of what goes on in the flight of Icarus is dictated by that physical setting. Finally, let's think about the culture of the setting. This may be a little bit difficult for you to understand at first, especially if you're not a student of ancient Greek culture. You may know something about ancient Greek culture or not, but the story does announce that we are talking about a kingdom. We are not talking about a democracy. We are talking about a society that is structured around one ruler who rules completely, who makes laws and issues judgments based upon his own personal opinion and decisions and nothing more. This leads to repressive laws. King Minos imprisons Daedalus simply for vengeance sake. This set of repressive laws and the actions of a cruel leader limits individual freedom, and we can understand the nature of Daedalus's imprisonment based upon our understanding that the story is operating within a kingdom. Thus his imprisonment on the island makes sense. We understand that he cannot do much and that his act of building wings is an act of desperation within a kingdom setting. These are the three levels of setting within the flight of Icarus, and understanding each in turn can help us understand the complex messages of the story and understand it on a deeper level.
deeper than simple summary. To review, the three levels of setting are a way for you to understand setting completely and to understand the messages that might be conveyed by it. Knowing when the setting is, knowing where the setting is, and knowing the people of the setting can help you understand the messages that lie underneath everything that goes on.